Hi everyone, in this video we are going to learn about using Apollo modules when creating an Apollo GraphQL server. So we've all probably experienced creating a GraphQL server and we have a schema file that end up looking like this. This file can get quite long and multiple teams can be working on this file and there can be a lot of merge conflicts and people kind of just jump around this file, add things to it and kind of just monkey patch it as they go and it becomes really unmaintainable. And there is a better way to do this. And previously, uh, before Apollo 2.2.1, you were able uh, to do this by just stitching some things together uh, with template literals and JavaScript. However, there's a much easier way now that Apollo have provided that's built in. So in this video, we're gonna learn about how we can do that and get set up with a brand new Apollo server. Let's start by creating a directory for our project and changing directory to that project. We'll next run yarn init. Then we'll add some Yon uh, dependencies here. Next, we'll open Visual Studio to edit our project. Next, we wanna create an index.js file. And this is where we'll create our Apollo server. We need to import Apollo server from Apollo server. And now we'll instantiate a new Apollo server. And inside of here, we will place reference to our modules. But we're just gonna leave that as an empty array for now. And then next, we need to start the server. So to do that, we'll type server.listen. And then on the callback for that listen promise, we will get the URL and then we'll just console log once the server is listening uh, the address to the console and which and where it's running. We can now go ahead and create a new file for our first module. This module will be product and we'll create this file inside of a folder called product which is inside of a folder called modules. First we'll want to import the GraphQL tag helper from Apollo server. Then we can use that to create a new const for our type definitions. Inside of our template literal for our GraphQL tag here, we will extend the type query and we'll define a new query type called product. We will set a product ID as an argument with an ID of its type and that will return a product. We will also create a query type for multiple products that returns an array of product. Next, you wanna actually go ahead and create that product type. And inside of there, we're just gonna define an ID, a name of string and a price that is an integer. Next, we need to create the resolvers for that query. So we will define a query and we'll then we'll define the resolver for the product query. Inside of here, we need to get the argument ID so we can destructure from args and get the ID, and then we'll just create a function. We'll now return a new product, and the, the actual object here will just return the ID that we passed in, and then a name of lamp and a price. We'll now go ahead and create the products resolver. That doesn't take in any arguments, it just returns an array of products. So we're just gonna create some products here that return a random ID, a name and a price. Now that we have two products returned from our products query, all we need to do now is export this and export the two cons that we have defined above. It's important that these are named type defs and resolvers. Now inside of our index.js, we'll need to update the Apollo server to include this new module. So let's just run a simple require and point it to the folder for our product module. Next. All you need to do is run node index.js and then GraphQL Apollo will run the server. If you open the GraphQL playground and have a look at this schema, you'll see that we have schema and products query types both in there. You can see we have the ID for the arguments. So if we create a, pr a product query and we pass in an ID and then we just get back the name price and the ID for now, you'll see that returns the data that we create in the resolver. Again, if we run product, don't pass in any arguments, but return the ID, name or price, you'll see that we get the two products back that we created. So at this point, you're probably thinking, well, we've defined some types and a resolver. However, this isn't really showing me how modular Apollo server can be. So next, we are gonna look at creating another module, and I'm just gonna copy and paste what we've created already, and I'm gonna rename this. So we're gonna create a category and product relationship here. So a category can have many products, and a product can belong to a category. Now inside of my index.js file for the category, I'm just gonna rename product to be category, and we're gonna return a category type, and then we're gonna update the plural products to be categories, and we're gonna return an array of categories. Then I'm just going to update the category type, and we will remove price, but we will now return an array of products. Then inside of my resolvers, I'm gonna do the same and rename product and products, to be category and categories respectively. Now I am removing the price from the resolver and I'm just gonna return some dummy products that I've created previously. 
And then we're going to update the categories resolver to return an array of categories. I'm just going to return the same products and return some dummy IDs. And then we'll be able to use this in the GraphQL playground in just a second. And we'll copy and paste the category response and we'll return two categories and we'll update the name of the second category. Now all that's left to do is to update and create a new root resolver. And that is for the product. Now notice how in this file, we're now going to just be extending the product to include our new category resolver. So we haven't had to edit anything in the product. So the category remains completely isolated and we can just extend models and schema types as we go. Now by extending the product in this file, it keeps everything isolated. So inside of the product root resolver, we need to define the category. So that is when you look for a product and you look to get the category of that product. We need a way to be able to tell GraphQL where to look and where to get that data from. Of course, if you're using your own database, you would do a lookup to the table. Now all that's left to do at this point is extend the product type. We wrote the product resolver at the root level, and now we just need to extend the product to include the category that we made a resolver for. So we're just gonna return a category for that category type. Now the final thing, to get this to actually work is to, inside of our Apollo server, let's just include the new category module. And we'll just do a require statement like we did for product. Now let's start the server and head on over to the GraphQL playground. And in here, we'll run a query to get all of our products and we'll get the uh, ID, the name, and we'll actually get the category for that product. And because we have configured the root resolver for product and category, this should return the data that we defined in the resolver. And there we have it. We have two products with our two separate categories. Now, if we run a query to get all of our categories and get the name and the products of those, that should also return the products as well as the categories.